This is a Minkowski diagram. Minkowski diagrams are graphical representations of space and time, where the x-axis represents space or an object's position and the y-axis is time. Light always travels at a 45 degree angle. It forms these sections, known as light cones, which show all of the events in the past or future that can affect an object at this current position. Anything outside of this light cone cannot interfere with an object at that position. However, there are a couple of issues with the Minkowski diagrams. For one, time and space go on infinitely, so there is no way to show all possible past and future events. Additionally, the representation of space-time in Minkowski diagrams is warped when it comes to black holes. Instead of time continuing infinitely upwards and space increasing infinitely outwards, once an object crosses the event horizon of a black hole, aka the point of no return, all possible futures point towards the singularity. Graphically, time would be represented as going inwards, while space travels infinitely upwards and downwards. Another issue is that the behavior of light changes nearing the event horizon of a black hole. This is where the Penrose diagram comes in. Essentially, the Penrose diagram, or Penrose-Carter diagram, is a way to fit Minkowski diagrams into a compact and finite space through conformal transformation, manipulating a graph so that the angles are preserved, but lengths may not be. Think of a photographer using a fisheye lens in order to capture a more complete picture. The graph looks more or less the same. The y-axis is time and the x-axis is space, and light travels at 45 degrees. The corners represent infinite time and infinite space. Approaching these points, something is becoming more time-like, and approaching these points, an object becomes more space-like. Approaching the borders, it is said that something becomes light-like. Here is a representation of a Schwarzschild black hole on a Penrose diagram. The Schwarzschild black hole is one that is formed from collapsing matter. It has no angular momentum and no electric charge. They are far from realistic representations, but they are useful in terms of simplicity. Here is the event horizon, represented by a 45 degree boundary, and this is the singularity of a black hole. Now, let's take an object such as a satellite and send it towards the event horizon of a black hole. As it approaches the event horizon, more and more of its future light cone is within the black hole and pointing towards the singularity. The parts of the light cone outside of the event horizon depict the chances that the satellite has to escape. However, if the entirety of the satellite's future light cone was past the event horizon, the only way for it to escape would be to travel faster than light. But since the satellite must travel at paths less than 45 degrees with the vertical, all of its future events terminate at the singularity. So if you ever decide to take a road trip through space, just remember to glance at your Penrose diagram beforehand to ensure your future light cone isn't pointing you towards the singularity of a black hole.